Hello and welcome to the episode 325 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. George Harrison deported from Hamburg, BBC upsetting the Beatles and John Lennon losing a son before he was even born are the main stories of the episode. 21st of November 1960, Hamburg, West Germany. Having heard that the Beatles were routinely sharing the stage with Tony Sheridan and the Jets at the Top Ten Club, a competing venue, Kaiser Keller's owner Bruno Koschmeider had decided to take action. It was probably him that arranged for George Harrison to be deported. As we've seen in yesterday's episode, a seemingly routine check from the German police had revealed that George was breaking the law by working below the legal age to do so. In fact, under West Germany laws, Harrison was not even allowed to stay into a club after midnight, let alone working one. On this date, George received a notice of deportation. He was to return home alone, paying the expenses. George spent all the money he had saved in Hamburg on train and ferry tickets and taxi fares for a trip that lasted 24 hours. Despite the commotion, the Beatles, now simply featuring John Lennon and Paul McCartney on guitar and voice, Stu Sutcliffe on bass and Pete Best on drums, kept on performing at the Kaiser Keller for the 49th straight night. One year later, in 1961, the Beatles, now with Pete Best on drums, George Harrison and John Lennon on guitar and Paul McCartney on bass, performed a lunchtime concert at the Cavern Club and their third Tuesday night gig at the Merseyside Civil Service Club. Both venues were in Liverpool. Another double feature in 1962. The Beatles, now in their definitive lineup with Ringo Starr on drums, performed twice at the Cavern Club. Their lunchtime engagement was a swap with another band, the Rima Four, to accommodate the London trip that the Beatles were to undertake on the 23rd. See episode 327 to see why. After that, the band returned on the premises at night for an evening of rock and roll dancing. 1963. The Beatles' autumn tour stopped at the AB Cinema in Carlisle today for two more concerts in one evening. Here's one more plea from me instead. Please visit www.simonmas.com support and see what you can do to lend me a hand to help me create more and better music-related content. No donation is too small and no other help will go unnoticed. And if you think I can do better than this, drop me a line and let me know what I can improve. Thank you! The 21st of November 1967 edition of Top of the Pops came to bitterly displease the Beatles. Initially, the episode of the program was supposed to include one of the promo clips of Hello Goodbye and, in fact, we saw in episode 319 that further work on the song had been necessary to show the clip and accommodate the June 1966 British Musicians' Union ban on mimed performances on TV. The new mix of the song, omitting the viola parts, was rejected by BBC, and so show producer Johnny Stewart talked the Beatles into trying out a new idea. How about allowing the network to show some of the footage of the Magical Mystery Tour film, still being edited at Norman's Film Productions, and add a couple of new still photographs of the band to create a unique clip that would eliminate any obvious mimed part and could interest the public in the new cinematic adventure of the pubs? The Beatles accepted and allowed BBC access to part of the edited footage of their new film and to film editor Roy Benson at work, but then, on this evening's show, Top of the Pops aired Hello Goodbye backing it with an assemblage of a hard day's night scenes. 
The Beatles didn't like the choice one bit. It wasn't just a question of rejecting a previous old image of the band, but also of leaving part of the promise unfulfilled and getting no publicity for Magical Mystery Tour. Let's close the episode with a bittersweet day in 1968. On this date, Yoko Ono suffered a miscarriage and lost the baby she was expecting from John Lennon. The child was named John Ono Lennon II and buried in a secret location. The baby's heartbeat was included in the couple's Life with the Lions, followed by two minutes of silence. Also today, George Harrison was at the Wally Hyder studio in Los Angeles, California, to help Cream to record Badge, a song he had written with Eric Clapton for the Goodbye album. The song was issued as a single and credited to Clapton and Harrison, but, due to contractual reasons, it was credited to Clapton and L'Angelo Misterioso, the mysterious angel, on the album. This recording session concludes the episode. Join me tomorrow for two album releases, because I like to offer you double the fun the average daily podcast does. Just kidding. Anyhow, come tomorrow and see if I was exaggerating. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.